Hello everybody and welcome back to the second shelf. It's been a while. I haven't uploaded for two weeks. Um, you might have noticed or probably not because like me you had other things on your mind. Um, and I was... I, first of all I did I was just not in the mood uh, for filming and then it's not a good idea to film uh, because you don't want to watch a video that I don't feel like making um, but I also was thinking is it a good idea to film should I film you know like other people do the hibernation TBR things like that and then I thought no no um, I mean I don't want to ignore um, the pandemic of course and I hope you all are safe and healthy but I also felt that I want to keep um, as much as possible um, I, I want to keep things normal as much as possible and one of the things normal to me is making videos I have uh, certain themes, I have certain uh, recurring videos like the recent reads and, and so forth. So what I decided to do is I, I will try to just keep that up because maybe people appreciate a distraction and a sort of, you know, normalcy at least uh, when they watch my channel. I'm not sure yet whether I will upload twice a week. Uh, or wh whether I will go back to once a week because I also feel that people just don't have as much time to, to watch videos and like I said they have other things on their mind but anyway so this one is a regular Wednesday video but special because uh, the octofinals of the booktube prize um, have been finalized uh, if you don't know what the booktube prize is uh, um, I will leave a link to Robert uh, Robert's channel from Bada Hordes who organizes the prize thank you Robert I hope you sort of can breathe now because the first round um, has been finalized and most of the judges reported back so just breathe and the next um, anxiety attack will probably come end of May when the next round the quarterfinals have to be finalized anyway so if you don't know it's a, a, a price in two categories this year fiction and non-fiction we started last year with only fiction um, and there are various rounds uh, starting with this first round, the octafinals, where 48 books, fiction books, are judged um, that have been published in English in the United States in 2019. Um, I judged uh, a group, uh, there are groups of six books, um, and I judged one particular group, obviously, <laughs> group B, um, and the books in that group were... Uh, Women Talking by Miriam Taves, uh, Ghost Wall by Sarah Moss, Such a Fun Age by uh, Kylie Reed, uh, The Dutch House by Anne Patchett, um, A Single Thread by Tracy Chevalier, and Gods of Jade and Shadow by Sylvia Moreno Garcia. Uh, what you do, uh, if you're not familiar uh, with the Book 2 Prize, you have to rank the six books in your group from one, which is the worst, to, uh, uh, sorry, from six, which is the worst, to one, which is the best. And you can't uh, tie, so you have to fill every slot. Okay, here's my ranking. Uh, and we start at the bottom, slots six and five. And there were two books uh, out of the six that I felt were really not good. Um, and the first one is uh, Sarah Moss, Ghost Wall, um, which I read last year already. Um, uh, it's uh, it has been published in England um, uh, in 2018, I think. So I read it uh, beginning of last year or something. Um, and the other book that I felt was really not good uh, was a debut novel, uh, Kyla Reed, uh, Such a Fun Age, which was published last year. First, uh, real quick. Uh, Ghost Wall. The book is set in contemporary England and we follow our main character Sylvie, a 17-year-old girl who goes on vacation with her mother and father and the vacation consists of joining an anthropology project that has been organized by a professor with a couple of students um, and the, the, the aim of this project is to live in the wild and re-enact the life of ancient Britons before you know, 
you have to gather berries and stuff like that. And things go wrong really quickly. Think Lord of the Flies. I, I, yeah, a, a lot of people love this book, I know, but it just didn't work for me at all. I felt that the characters, except for Sylvie, were really cliched, especially the men. The story was completely unbelievable to me that things would go wrong that fast, human sacrifice and all that. And the ending was just cheesy and it also felt as if the author thought, well, I'm not sure what I'm going to do next. Maybe I'll just end the book here. So despite all the praise and despite a lot of people who loved it, for me, the book didn't work. And then next, uh, Such a Fun Age, the debut novel by um, Kyle, Kylie, Kyle Reed. I should have looked that up. I know. I'm not back in the groove as I should be. I hope you can forgive me. Uh, anyway, such a fun age. Um, uh, a very interesting premise. You have a very successful uh, white uh, uh, woman, um, um, Alexis, and she is started as a blogger, and now she has this whole following uh, follower group, um, you know, in Instagram and. Mm, um, and she lives in uh, with her husband and, and young child, and she hires Amira, a 25-year-old um, black uh, woman, as a babysitter. And the story uh, takes off when Amira, at a certain point, uh, for various reasons that didn't make sense, but... Anyway, I uh, was asked to, uh, to take the child uh, in the middle of the night out of the house and she wanders into a shopping mall and there she is almost arrested because people think a black woman with a white child, she must have kidnapped the child, of course, because that's why she's in the shopping mall. And from there, the story takes off. And the, the premises... Uh, is interesting about white wokeness and about the whole, you know, social media hype and the relationship between a young black woman and an, uh, a successful white woman could have been interesting, but the writing was so clunky that I thought it was cringeworthy. Uh, the story didn't make sense because you always felt right from the start, that things just happened because they needed to happen in order for the story to develop. Uh, the characters fell completely flat for me. So, yeah, it, it was, no, I, I, it was just not good. A minority opinion again, because I looked at Goodreads and praise all over, but for me, it didn't work. Then I had to decide, of course, which book will go six and which will, book will go fifth. And I decided because uh, Such a Fun Age is a debut novel, it deserves a little bit more slack. So I put Ghost Wall um, in sixth place and uh, Such a Fun Age in fifth place. Then there were two books that I thought were not all bad and had merits, but didn't, didn't convince me. And the first, I have to say, another minority opinion was uh, Dutch House by Anne Patchett. Um, it's a family saga over five decades uh, around a house, hence the Dutch House. Uh, it's told from uh, the perspective of Denny, who together with his uh, older sister Maeve um, is exiled from his house and life when his uh, very rich father, who bought the house, the Dutch house, um, marries um, uh, his second wife and they did, don't get along. And uh, uh, when the father dies, the two children, uh, Denny and his sister, are exiled not only from the house, but they are ripped of their inheritance, they are poor, they have to cope, and Danny goes to medical school, and then, you know, the story takes off from there over these five decades, uh, Danny and Maeve always going back to the house, looking at it, uh, you learn about their lives, and the merit of the book is that Anne Patchett can definitely write, she can, you know, tell a story, but the story was just not good. It was so laughable at times, uh, things that happened. For instance, when you learn about uh, uh, Danny and Maeve's mother, uh, who left them when they were very little, um, uh, what happened to her, and th that that was, yeah, it, it, I, just, I really had to laugh about the story. So it, it didn't really make 
sense to me. And the second book in this sort of middle mid range ranking, not not entirely bad, but for me not a really good book, um, is Gods of Jade and Shadow by Silvia Moreno Garcia. Um, the book is set in Mexico, in the southern part of Mexico, during um, the 1920s, the Jazz Age, and the main character um, is Cassiopeia, um, a young woman um, who lives in her grandfather's house together with her mother uh, as servants, because they fell out of fortune, so, you know. Um, her life is quite dreary, and um, uh, there's this horrible cousin, um, until one day um, she accidentally frees an old Mayan god. Um, no, no need to go into detail. She frees that god who had a quarrel with another god, and so he was uh, captured. Um, and for various reasons, Cassiopeia is more or less forced to help this god uh, get back his life, quote unquote. Um, and then you, it's a sort of a road trip adventure going also to the underworld, the Mayan underworld. It's not my type of book. Uh, it's just that that type of story is just not something that I'm really interested in reading. But I can see that people who love this type of story would really enjoy the book. Would you think the story is engaging? Uh, I, I really liked the Mayan part, the mythology part. So it it felt to me that the book um, uh, it, it, it didn't engage me also because it's just not my type of story. And then I had to make a decision, of course, which of the two, Dutch House and uh, Gods of Jade and, and Shadow, had to go fourth and third. And I should have mentioned that before um, because it, this is a sort of important decision. Um, out of the six books in each group, the the first three, so the, the first, the, the books that rank one, two, and three, uh, when all uh, the rankings are counted, advance to the quarterfinals. And I decided, because Anne Patchett uh, is such a experienced writer, and her story just didn't make any sense to me, I will put her in fourth place, and the story, even though I couldn't really engage with it, uh, of uh, Silvia Moreno Garcia in third place. There are obviously now two books left Miriam Taves, uh, Women Talking, and Tracy Chevalier, A Single Thread. Um, A Single Thread is set in 1932 ish, after the Great War, um, and we follow our main character, Violet, who lost uh, her brother and her fiance in uh, World War I, and who is one of the, what is called the surplus women. You know, the women without men, and obviously there are more women left after the war than men, so she will probably never marry. Um, and she has this overbearing mother, and she decides to leave. Um, uh, the town where she lives in and move somewhere else to try to get her life together. She finds work there, but more importantly, she finds a community of women um, uh, who broder us, who embroider um, the kneelers and the cushions for the cathedral. Uh, she also uh, becomes friendly with one of the men who ring the church bells, uh, she goes on a walk by herself, and we learn about the landscape and the cathedrals. I I liked the the story. It it was well told. Um, I'm not an embroiderer, but it 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 was engaging to learn something about that, and also to learn something about you know how to ring church bells and how that works, and how the group of men who ring the bells um, how they work together. So it was just. A very nice story, but also I felt it was not um, something you know to really write home about. It it was nice, it was entertaining, it was well told. Second place, and of course, then you might not be surprised if you've been following my channel, uh, Women Talking by Miriam Taves, Canadian author. Uh, I put first because that is a really special story. Uh, in a Mennonite society um, based on true events, 
uh, women have at night have been drugged um, and raped by a group of men in the society and this group of men is now arrested and in the story women talking while the men are away um, also the men who are not arrested because they went to the city in order to get bail uh, for the accused they gather uh, in the attic of a barn in order to discuss what to do. Should they leave? Should they stay? Should they confront the accusers? There's one man left uh, who is kind of an outsider as well. And because the women uh, can't write, he is asked to sort of take the minutes, you know, make a, a, a notes of these meetings. I thought that was an absolutely fascinating story, heart-wrenching at times, but yeah, wonderful. So, of course, Women Talking, I put in first. Um, and I will also tell you uh, which books of my group advanced. My first two choices, a Women Talking and A Single Thread, advanced, and to no surprise for me, also The Dutch House by Anne Patchett. It was great fun, uh, this first round, to judge the books and to rank the books and to think about why you put one in fourth and one in fifth. I, I, I loved it. So again, thank you very much, uh, Robert, uh, for organizing this. I will also be judging the quarterfinals. I will leave uh, the books that I will judge in that group uh, down below. Uh, quarterfinals end on the 30th or 31st of May. So I will not be able to talk about the books until the beginning of June, but of course I will then also tell you my ranking. So this was it for my first video after two weeks. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, stay safe and healthy, and I'll see you all soon in the next one.